Let's bring in Robert Charles, former Assistant Secretary of State for George W. Bush and a former Naval Intel Officer. Uh, Charles, Bobby Charles, uh, your assessment of the breaking news, the strikes that are happening as we speak. Yeah, I think Americans should stay focused Todd, on on both the tactical and the strategic aspects of this. Tactically, this is a move upwards. This is an escalation of that conflict, which is regional and could become global. Strategically, there's a couple of things to keep in mind. Hezbollah is is the largest surrogate of Iran in the region, and uh, Hezbollah is sort of Hamas on steroids. So really, this is a conflict with Iran. Another thing to keep in mind is that Hezbollah has operatives in this country. There have been more than 100 arrests in recent years of people either financially or operationally trying to he help Hezbollah in this country. So something, again, to keep in mind. But the big strategic piece here is that if a ceasefire does not happen soon, ultimately it is a big fail for the Biden-Harris administration. And why is that? It Because, first of all, Russia and China then get an opening to do all kinds of things in chaos, uh, with chaos occurring in the Middle East. In addition, you get the, the – ultimately, it's a, it's a diplomatic fail on the part of the administration, which means in the end that it helps Trump. And uh, and ironically, sort of the second or third order effect in here is that Iran does not want to see Trump reelected because it would dramatically affect their future. So Iran will probably pull back, but escalation is a real possibility here. And, you know, this is higher and more intense uh, conflict than we have seen in a long time, probably since 2006 in this region. And I would encourage people to remember that uh, it, it, Israel has the ability to defend itself with nuclear weapons, which should in some ways put Put, uh, Iran back on their on their heels. Now, Robert, I want you to listen to right now again. All deference. This was 24 hours ago when John Kirby was on Fox News Sunday. But nevertheless, the the information and the attitude coming out of this administration remains the same. Here's John Kirby. Take a listen. We still believe that there is time and space for diplomacy to work here. We understand uh, that it's not moving in the best direction, but that doesn't mean we think that. Uh, engaging in another full front, another all-out war in the North is the best thing for Israel. Robert, specifically, he was referring to a report that Israel managed to stop a second October 7th, which for them is their equivalent of 9-11, with some very, very targeted strikes to some very senior Hezbollah leaders. To be clear, Israel prevented their next 9-11, and yet John Kirby is questioning them that makes no sense to me. What say you? Yeah, you're, you're absolutely right, Todd. We should not be ambivalent here. We should not be confused here. We should be very direct in our support for Israel, because I've read those reports, too, and it looks like there was an intent uh, of Hezbollah to come in again, and this time in, in even larger numbers. So at the end of the day, uh, what this really means is that if we need to support Israel unequivocally. This is a different. This is the, the choice between deterrence and appeasement. And in the end, unfortunately, the Biden-Harris crowd has been very much about appeasement. I don't think there's any room for that anymore. I think at this stage of the game, everything has to be about deterrence, which means, Todd, that we need to tell people, we need to tell the world and our allies need to tell the world that we stand with Israel in their own defense. For the first time ever, uh, Hezbollah, surrogate for Iran, has actually been hitting pieces of the Iron Dome and the Iron Dome facility, uh, production facilities. So they're, they're truly trying to take this up a notch. But if they take it up too many notches, I think they're going to be sorry they did. With that as the backdrop, the Iranian president arrives here in New York City ahead of his address to the U.N. General Assembly tomorrow. Need a quick answer on this, Robert. When the General Assembly is over, will the Iranian president return to Iran scared or emboldened? I would like to believe that the message he receives once being here is that uh, he needs to back off, back down, and back away. But I don't think that's going to happen. I think that what we're going to hear is, again, probably more ambivalence and a kind of uh, uh, mealy-mouthed response to what he has to say. He, of course, will be very anti-American and very anti-Israeli. On our soil, and yet we placate it. Makes no sense. Robert Charles, thanks for your insight on a breaking news morning. We appreciate it. I'm Steve Ducey. I'm Brian Kilmeade. And I'm Ainsley Earhart. And click here to subscribe to the Fox News YouTube page to catch our hottest interviews and most compelling analysis.